uh, VAV systems are, are central air conditioning systems. Um, they condition the space using cool air uh, ducted from central air handling units to each temperature controlled area. Uh, so the uh, it's uh, an all air system supplying air to each space to be conditioned. The the difference between VAV and other all air systems is that the VAV systems uh, control the room temperature by varying the volume of air delivered to each space. So which is different to the uh, a constant air volume systems which supply a constant volume of air to the space. VAV systems have grown in popularity because they not only provide the facility to individually control the temperature of each conditioned area, but they uh, also save energy by reducing the amount of air uh, supplied when, uh, when less cooling is required. So they only supply the air when the cooling is needed, or they only supply as much air as required to, uh, to meet the cooling requirement. Uh, they become very popular uh, worldwide and uh, uh, many large offices, building, public buildings, hospitals, hotels use the VAV system. And also the, the VAV systems and the principles of VAV are very well uh, applied now in industrial applications. So we'll talk about that, about that later on. Now let's look at the overall arrangement of the VAV system. Uh, this diagram shows the configuration of the most popular type of VAV system, which is the single duct system. Uh, as you can see here, it comprises of uh, firstly water chillers and central air handling units that cool a mixture of fresh and, uh, and return air uh, and distribute that air around the building through a main air distribution duct to each of the air conditioned spaces. And this is where this name, uh, single duct system comes from. Um, there are, in each space uh, or each independently temperature controlled room or zone, there are VAV terminals that uh, vary the amount of cool air delivered to that area to individually control the space temperature. Uh, room temperature controllers uh, uh, measure the room temperature and compare that to the required set point to determine the amount of cool air required for each space. Now, VAV systems uh, cool a building using only air. And uh, as such, they are known as an all, one, an all air system. There are two basic types of all air system. The first is a constant air volume system, and the second is variable air volume systems. Both of these cool the air by delivering air to the room at a lower temperature than the room temperature. And the amount of cooling provided to the room can be determined using the formula shown here, which is that the amount of cooling or the amount of heat transfer is equal to the air density times the specific heat of air times the airflow times the delta T being the difference between the room and the supply air temperature. And these two systems, the constant air and the variable air volume systems, uh, vary the amount of cooling provided in space in, in, in two different ways. Firstly, the, the, the constant air volume system. This keeps the supply airflow constant and it varies the delta T, that being the difference between room and supply air temperature. And it does that by varying the supply air temperature. Whereas the variable air volume system works in the opposite way, it varies the supply air, air flow, the air volume. It keeps the delta T constant by maintaining the constant supply air temperature. Now, this results uh, in, the, in the big benefits of VAV systems. By, by varying the airflow and uh, reducing the airflow when not needed, uh, we, we use much less central uh, air handling unit fan energy. And this gives a lot of energy saving to the variable air volume system.
here you can see the arrangement of the uh, constant air volume system. Uh, this varies the cooling supply by varying the supply air temperature, but it cannot provide different temperatures for different rooms. So the room that gets the temperature sensor gets the overall control, or alternatively, as shown here, everyone has to live with the control being based on the average return temperature. And then some rooms will be, we will be too hot and some will be too cold. And of course, by having a constant airflow, uh, whether the cooling is needed or not is uh, waste energy, waste fan energy. So what about other systems? Here we show a, a fan core system, which can be a chilled water fan core or, or fan cores using refrigerant like uh, VRF. Um, chilled water or VRF fan core systems are almost the same in terms of operation, except one uses chilled water and the other uses refrigerant to distribute and vary the amount of cooling supplied to the, to the, to the space. They, they both provide individual room control, but they do have a disadvantage. Uh, many small terminal units with many small recirculation fans, which operate at very low efficiencies. Now this again results in wasted fan energy. So let's look again at the VAV system. VAV systems vary the amount of cool air supplied to each room to control the temperature. And also, the total amount of cooled air supplied to the VA terminals is controlled by varying the fan speed of the central air handling unit, uh, normally using an inverter. So the benefits uh, provides individual room temperature control and reduces the amount of air circulated around the building when not needed. And that's what results in this large saving of AHU fan energy. But why, why, why are the um, AHU fan energy savings so important? Well, because the fan power or the energy used for the fan is proportional to the airflow to the power of three. So as you can see from the graph, even with a small reduction in the airflow down to 70%, this results in a big reduction in the fan power or the, uh, the energy used down to 34%. Now, if you compare VAV systems to fan core systems, chilled water or VRF, the efficiency of those small recirculation fans uh, used with the fan core systems are very low, typically about 40% only. Now, the efficiency of the air hand unit fans and motors is typically around 80% plus. So there's a big difference in the fan energy used due to the fan efficiency difference, and also with fan core systems, uh, Normally, the uh, airflow is there whether it's needed or not. So you are using more energy to keep maintaining the fan running. Uh, with uh, VAV systems save energy uh, actually through, through, through the day, every day, and even in the summer. Uh, during the non-peak cooling hours, the system only provides the amount of cooling needed um, needed to meet the actual cooling load and avoiding uh, wasting any 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 effort any energy uh, excuse Similarly, me mr allen can... yeah excuse me mr allen can you be slightly louder or bring your microphone near to your uh, mouth oh okay i can't get it much closer um but let me see uh let me just uh, stop and have a, see if I can adjust my volume then here. Right? Give me a minute. Oops. Hmm. Excellent. Well, it seems my uh, volume control here is only uh, uh, reflecting the headphones. So um, I'll try and speak louder, shall I? Yeah, please. Thank you. I'll, tell you, I'll try another way. Yeah, OK.
Okay, is that is that better? No, it's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'll hold the microphone close to my mouth. Um. Yeah. So where was I? Okay. So um, energy. Uh, we say variable volumes systems save energy each day. Um, they only provide the air when needed. So in the morning warm up or evening cool down. Uh, even in the middle of summer, they're saving energy. Similarly, in intermediate seasons, if cooling is not required, the air is not supplied, so it saves energy. I'm talking here versus a constant constant volume system. Um, so in, in, in summary, for energy savings, uh, the AV systems only supply the amount of air needed to match the cooling required. So it saves energy through the day, through the year. Fan kilowatt savings are proportionally uh, much more than the reduction in airflow because the, of the fan power being proportional to the airflow to the power three. And uh, central uh, air handling unit fan efficiencies are 80% plus versus fan core units and VRF fan and motor efficiency of maybe around 40%. So normally, uh, if you compare a VAV system with a, a fan core system or with a constant volume system, the system energy savings are normally about up to 30% per year. So now let's look at closer at the VAV terminals themselves. And uh, shown here are the most popular types of uh, uh, single duct uh, VAV terminals as being a round round type, uh, compact type, that's, that's a rectangular a round inlet and a rectangular outlet and a rectangular type. So starting with the with the, the round type, uh, these have round inlet and, and outlet and they're uh, very suitable for using round circular ducting and also uh, very good when the VAV terminal is connected to a, a single diffuser um, because you only need one duct from the terminal to diffuser. They're available in diameters of uh, uh, 100 millimeter to, to 400 millimeter. Uh, they have a single skin casing or double skin casing and uh, uh, in, they can have integral insulation for thermal insulation and sound attenuation. The, uh, there is a built-in flow sensor, which you can see here in the picture, right at the, right at the inlet to the unit, and the unit-mounted actuator, together with the flow sensor, provides pressure-independent control. Um, Now the next type is what's called compact type. Uh, as I mentioned, it's round inlet, rectangular outlet. Uh, basically, they're on the discharge size is a rectangular plenum, um, which uh, is normally internally insulated, which provides thermal insulation and also attenuation of the discharge noise. Um, it can be single skin or double skin. And again, it has the built-in uh, flow sensor and the uh, built-in controller. The third type, rectangular units, uh, they have, of course, a rectangular inlet and outlet. Uh, they're available in small sizes, quite small sizes, like 100 to two by 200 millimeter, up to uh, large units, like one meter by 1.2 millimeter, uh, 1.2 meter. Um, they, uh, they have parallel opposed uh, um, damper blades, uh, normally aerofoil, uh, aerofoil design, and they're, um, they're, they're, they're mo mainly used for, for larger zones uh, when larger airflows are required. Or, or we could say they're mainly used for wherever rectangular ducting is used. So I think it's often uh, uh, the design is easier to make the the VAV terminal, the same shape as the ducting to avoid transitions, or the transitions. They're available with single or double skin. And again, they have the same 
uh, flow sensors built in and a unit controller. Now, um, there are a number of important features of uh, VAB terminals which are listed here. Um, and these are the, they should be considered when, when designing um, a VAB system. So uh, I'll go through them one by one. Excuse me. So let's start with the, with the airflow sensor. Uh, a critical part of all VAB terminals. Um, it's probably the most important feature of the VAB terminal. The, the accuracy of the whole terminal and system depends on the capability of this device. Uh, the airflow sensor measures both the air, the total air pressure and the static air pressure at the inlet to the terminal. And this allows the velocity pressure to be determined by deducting the static pressure from the total pressure. Then the uh, velocity pressure, uh, from the velocity pressure, the air velocity and uh, the airflow through the terminal can be determined. Now, in order to get accurate airflow measurements, it is, uh, uh, it's important that the flow sensor to measure the true um, averages, both the total and uh, both the total and static pressure, and to compensate for the variations in velocity across the face of the duct. Um, this is because the the friction between the air and the duct wall reduces the air velocity closer to the wall, so the velocity profile is not is not various as as you go across the across the duct. So the positioning of the sensing points is very important to achieve this accurate average. And then these these are uh, should be positioned on a on an equal area basis to compensate for the for the uh, the uh, um, variation in the velocities. Uh, the more the number of sensing points is also important. Um, the, num the more sensing points, the more accuracy. At least 12 measuring points are recommended for both total and static pressure on two, um, two axes, two perpendicular axes. So in all, that makes 24 measuring points. Um, the, the individual pressure measurements should be combined to create an average uh, of, uh, of uh, the overall total pressure and the average of the overall static pressure. Then from that, we can get an accurate uh, average velocity pressure, and then the air velocity and the air flow rate. The next important aspect of flow sensors is their ability to, to amplify the pressure measurement signals. Um, the delta P pressure signal is, is proportional to the velocity pressure. And therefore, it varies with the square of the air velocity. Um, so, at uh, at lower air velocity, inlet velocities, the pressure the pressure signal can be quite small, that only a uh, only a uh, few few pascals, and that can limit the minimum operating pressure for the for the terminal. Um, this um, this can be overcome uh, by uh, using signal amplification which uh, which in, in, in amplifies the this differential pressure signal and also uh, helps to uh, improve the overall sensor accuracy. So in the example shown here, the sensor is designed, uh, the, the profile shape is designed to exaggerate the difference between the total and the static pressure measurements. So and it, so it provides a linear signal amplification by a, a, about a factor of two. Uh, this improves the accuracy of the velocity measurement, and uh, it results in an overall airflow control accuracy of about 2.5 percent for the uh, flow sensor, even with a regular duct approach. Now let's uh, talk about the uh, 
VAV terminal controls. Um, and here you can see uh, the we have the airflow sensor, which we talked about. There's the actuator controller and uh, the room temperature controller. Now, these three, three uh, parts together, they provide the room temperature control and also the pressure independent control. So what is uh, pressure independent control? Well, when uh, uh, without pressure independent control, when the, when the VAV dampers close, the airflow from the AHU reduces and the fan pressure, uh, fan discharge pressure will increase as the AHU fan follows the fan curve. This causes the static pressure upstream of the VAV units to also increase and results in more airflow from the terminal than, than, than required, more than the, the control may be saying it requires. So effectively, the terminal loses its ability to accurately supply the amount of air needed to control the space temperature. Uh, now, the pressure independent control overcomes this problem by using the airflow sensor and the controller to measure the amount of inlet airflow and then to correct the position of the damper to provide the right amount of airflow to control the room temperatures. So, so the, the terminal can, can supply the correct amount of air irrespective of the upstream pressure and hence pressure independent control. Now this is the, the control arrangement and as you can see, uh, the control is arranged, divided into two basic parts. There's the room temperature PID control, which compares the actual room temperature measured by the room temperature controller with the required temperature set point, and then outputs the required airflow and damper position relative to the, the, uh, the calibrated maximum and minimum airflows. Um, with the with the VAV controller, you always need to calibrate the maximum and minimum airflows to set the band, the range with which with 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 with, with which the controller should uh, the v terminal should work. the The second uh, part of the control is the airflow PID control. Um, this um, derives the actual airflow as measured by the flow sensor and then adjust the terminal damper to compensate for, for the difference between the, the actual measured airflow and the required airflow. And by doing so, this makes the, the overall control pressure independent. Now, the accuracy of the air volume control can also depend on the air damper operation. And in the case of uh, circular dampers with, for round units, uh, this can be enhanced by, uh, in fact, using an oval damper instead of a round, a round damper blade. As you can see from the graph here, um, this shows the airflow versus the damper position. The oval damper uh, provides a, a more linear relationship between the damper position and the and the airflow. Uh, so that means that um, you, you, particularly at the at the uh, near the near the open position, fully open, and near the closed uh, position, you get a a much a more linear arrangement arrange relationship, and you get more accurate control. The oval blade also uh, allows for a, a more definitive shut off against the circular housing. Um, uh, and that uh, improves the low leakage performance of the damper when the damper is closed. So I don't know if you can imagine when the damper closes, it doesn't, it can never go to to the to the perpendicular to the to the axis of the unit because it will touch the the walls of the of the uh, of the unit and and make a complete shut off. Now let's talk about the, the factory calibration of the controls. Um, to ensure the accurate function of the VAV controls, uh, these are the, 
these are the following uh, I, uh, items are, are essential. <clears throat> First of all, the calibration of the flow sensor together with the actuator controller to ensure the flow measurement accuracy. These two items need to work together um, and uh, they need to be calibrated together. Uh, the next thing is an accurate calculation of the room heat loads and from that the uh, the maximum and minimum air flows that are required to cool the room which need to be calibrated into the controller. The uh, accurate, accurate temperature control cannot be achieved if the maximum airflow set in is not, not even enough to, to provide the, the cooling required for the space. So the, the, the calibration of this maximum and minimum airflows is very important to the overall operation of the VAB terminal. The, um, the best way to, to ensure that the, the VAB terminals are uh, accurately calibrated and are actually achieving what they are calibrated to do is with, with factory calibration where, where the, uh, the actual airflow can be measured and uh, to determine that you know, the input to the control is actually coming out in the form of the amount of airflow required. Now, most uh, VAB terminals have some form of insulation, and that's to serve, uh, serves two purposes. Uh, firstly, to thermally insulate the unit, particularly um, to prevent condensation on the unit casing if the temperature of the supply air inside the terminal is lower than the dew point temperature of the air surrounding the, surrounding the terminal. Um, if you, if you, uh, if you, uh, as you, as you know that, uh, you take a, a glass of water, cold water, and if it's if the temperature of the glass because of the cold water is lower than the dew point of the air around it, the glass will quickly get covered in condensation. And the same happens with a, a VAV terminal. So it's um, often we insulate purely for that reason to prevent condensation. The, the second purpose is to provide uh, acoustic attenuation to reduce the the noise originating from the air handling unit or the noise generated by the VAB damper. And there are two types of noise that we need to consider. The first one is the discharge noise. And this is the noise transmitted to the room through the air ducting, um, be it air handling unit noise or damper generated noise. Uh, this can be attenuated with internal insulation in, in the, uh, in the uh, VAB terminal or in the ducting beyond that. And, uh, uh, or you can use uh, added attenuator sections or even acoustic duct lining further down the downstream in order to attenuate discharge noise. The, the second type of noise is the radiated noise, which is the sound radiated from the VAB terminal itself, from the body of the VAB terminal. Um, and that uh, that can be transmitted through the through the ceiling void to the ceiling, and uh, particularly if you have like metal ceilings, that can even amplify any any radiated noise from from either the AV terminals or even the, the ducting itself in the ceiling void. This can be attenuated with either with, with either internal or external case and insulation. Now, VAB terminals can be constructed with either single skin uh, construction, single skin casing, or a double skin casing. And uh, obviously, single skin casing is lower cost, but there are some uh, benefits on having double skin units. So, firstly, the, the if you if you have a double skin unit, uh, uh, often you do that in order to cover the insulation. Uh, this prevents a risk of any internal insulation loss due to uh, um, high air velocities eroding the uh, eroding the insulation. But particularly when you have uh, any fiber type insulation, 
if you and very high air velocities if the if the skin coating gets damaged in any way you can have fibers start to uh, be transmitted or or to be taken by the airstream down the ducting which is not uh, not a preferred option so it's um, it's often uh, double skins are used in order to encase the the insulation it's also good for allows the easy cleaning of the terminals particularly important for hospitals and medical facilities where you want to uh, clean the inside of the ducting to make sure there's no uh, 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 infections or, or viruses that could be transmitted from from through the air on the ducting uh, another another reason for using double skin is wherever electric heaters are used um, the uh, there is a uh, um, requirement in the safety requirement in most uh, most parts of the world that wherever you use electric heater in ducting you need to shield the insulation you, you cannot have it insulation exposed insulation within a certain distance of the electric heater uh, then of course the other reason for it may be to to uh, protect the external insulation from from site damage or transportation damage Now, air leakage is important, uh, uh, particularly on uh, on uh, more industrial type applications, but even on all applications, uh, air, air casing air leakage can create noise. Um, and so just like we, we don't like air leakage from ducting, we don't like air leakage from the VAV terminals. And there is a standard, a, a European standard, EN1751, which uh, um, can uh, classify the air leakage from the casing of a VAB terminals. Um, the uh, casing leakage is normally rated uh, uh, as uh, class A or class B. That's normally an acceptable class for commercial projects. But um, in industrial projects, you may require a much uh, lower leakage, that uh, being class B or class C, particularly on industrial projects or or uh, laboratories where you might have a risk of a uh, toxic uh, contaminants in the air leaking so the leakage is important similarly the uh, damper leakage is important too and uh, that again can be specified using the standard en1751 uh, and there are again different classes class one and two is normally acceptable for standard commercial projects but for industrial projects, it would be better to use class two or three, which has a much high, much lower uh, leakage rate. Now, some projects, particularly those for industrial or pharmaceutical applications, need anti-corrosive protection due to the corrosive chemicals in the air. Uh, stainless steel is used extensively where a high degree of corrosion resistance is required be it grade three, 304 or 316. Um, other alternatives are epoxy, epoxy coated uh, powder paint or, uh, or uh, other special coatings. Now let's uh, talk about the um, design considerations for VAV systems. And in particular, um, uh, uh, a VAV system is is, is 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 as good as the overall system design. Um, uh, the controls alone cannot create a good VAV system. And I think it's unfortunate that in the in our industry that sometimes people conclude that the VAV system is is very good because the controls can take care of all evils, and that's not quite that's not true. So care must be taken in the overall system design, and particularly the, the VAB terminal selection process in the air duct design and in the system static pressure control. So let's first uh, review the talk about the VAB terminal selection process. Uh, first step is to make an effective calculation of the room sensible heat loads both the maximum and minimum. 
That's because the amount of air we supply to the space needs to offset those those uh, heat loads. Um, so when I when I uh, what I mean here is that this is the room loads only. It's, I'm not talking about the outside air load or any other outside load. It's purely the loads in the room. So that means the solar radiation through the facade, through the glazing. It means the heat transmission through the outside walls or the roof or floor. It means the lighting, the mach uh, any machinery or equipment loads, and it means the people loads. So it's purely the room sensible loads. And we need to do this calculation for you know the, the maximum uh, cooling load required and also to understand what the, the, the minimum load will be. Now from the room sensible heat loads, we can calculate the required cooling air flows using the formula shown here, uh, which in metric units is, um, is the room sensible cooling load in watts is equal to 1.2 times the supply airflow in liter per second and times the delta T or the room minus supply air temperature in degrees uh, centigrade or Kelvin. Um, now the 1.2 is uh, is uh, a combination of the air density and the air specific heat. Uh, and for for the example heat loads on the on the previous page, uh, previous slide, uh, and assuming a room temperatures of 24 uh, and supply air temperature 14, we can here we can calculate the the air flows. Um, and for the maximum cooling with 2930 watts. The cooling air supply needs to be 244 liters per second. And for the minimum cooling of, say, 720 watts, uh, the minimum cooling airflow needs to be 60 liters per second. And that sort of sets the band of, uh, of operation for our, our VAV terminal. So now, let's, now we come to the selection of the size of the VAV terminal. Uh, in my experience, the, the best way to select VAV units is to select for an inlet air velocity of around eight to 10 meter per second. And the reason for that is um, those air velocities, they provide a reasonable noise level of uh, NC35 or, or less normally. The, the pressure drop across the, uh, across the damper, the minimum pressure drop is, is typically between 20 and 40 par. For the standard VAV unit, and with a minimum airflow of 25% of the maximum airflow, uh, the minimum airflow sensor velocity is still uh, greater than two meter per second, uh, which gives the flow sensor output signal adequate for accurate flow measurement. Um, as I mentioned earlier, even as you as you reduce the air velocity in the in the uh, in the uh, in the VAV unit, the the uh, differential pressure measured by the flow sensor will will reduce, and you can get to a point where it's it's not big enough to do an accurate have an accurate signal to do effective control. Um, yeah, the other the other thing is that the if you at uh, eight to ten meter per second inlet velocity seems to give a good cost effective selection in terms of the cost versus the noise performance. You can, of course, use higher velocities, but you will certainly get a lot more noise and you'll have a lot more pressure to overcome and therefore you'll use a lot more energy doing it. Now this flow chart shows the process for a single duct uh, VAV terminal selection. Uh, it comprises the starting with the airflow requirements that we've, we've uh, we just discussed uh, choosing the application constant or variable airflow because sometimes uh, these type of uh, single duct VAV terminals are also used for constant airflow to maintain a constant airflow. Uh, selecting the product type, be it round, compact, or rectangular, and then uh, selecting the unit the unit size based on the air velocity, uh, and then. Uh, Checking the unit air pressure drop and the noise levels from the manufacturer's data, and finally selecting the required accessories 
uh, multi-outlet connectors, reheaters, uh, controllers, um, uh, special insulation, paint finishes, etc. So let's continue with the uh, earlier example to complete the unit selection. So step one, um, the, we determine the calculated airflow range is uh, maximum cooling airflow we require is 244 liter per second, the minimum 60 liter per second. Uh, the next uh, step is to step two is to select the product type. So let's assume it's a compact type, round inlet, and rectangular outlet with internal insulation for uh, thermal insulation and uh, acoustic attenuation. Step three, we need to select the VAB terminal size and the inlet air velocity. So based on the recommended eight to ten meter per second and the chart shown here, we can select a uh, a model NC200 with a maximum airflow of 244 liter per second with an air velocity of 8 meter per second. Um, now, alternatively, the unit size can be found by calculation using the formula at the bottom of the slide here, which is simply uh, using the relationship between the airflow, the air velocity, and the area. Now, moving to step four, checking the pressure drop and the noise level. From the product, product catalog, we can see the pressure drop and the noise data for the maximum and minimum air flows required. Um, so you can see the green highlight area the, is the maximum air flow at 244 liter per second, and the blue is the minimum at 60 liter per second. Now, let's look closer at that data. Um, so the catalog shows for each airflow the the uh, the minimum unit pressure drop, and you can see in this case uh, for the maximum airflow that would be 25 par. It's also got the discharge sound power levels at each of the mid frequency bands from uh, 125 to 4,000 4, hertz, and uh, the radiated sound power levels at each of the mid-frequency bands. Now, the, the sound power level, as you probably realize, is the amount of sound energy developed by the, by the unit or, or uh, uh, the unit will, will have. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, the basis of how we determine the uh, amount of uh, sound pressure level in, in the space, which is the, is the thing that affects the fix people's uh, comfort uh, uh, and their, their noise perception. So uh, there is an assumption between the sound power levels here and the uh, and these uh, indicated sound uh, pressure level uh, based on the uh, attenuation effect of the room. And the, these, uh, these uh, most catalogs are based on um, uh, standard numbers that I are published in the AHRI uh, standards on what what manufacturers should use as a standard attenuation numbers, but from the uh, from the numbers here you can see that the uh, estimated room sound pressure level would be on the discharge sound side would be NC uh, twenty three. Now on the radiated sound side, it's not showing any any data there for the uh, for the um, uh, sound uh, sound pressure levels, and the, the, it's the LP values, it's the sound uh, sound pressure level. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, in this case, the uh, predicted sound pressure is um, lower than the 20, 20 dBA. So normally, if the numbers are below twenty dBA, they're considered it's not it's not worth uh, not worth uh, showing them. So this is uh, so they're not shown here, and therefore, in this case, the the uh, pro, uh, the uh, dominant sound source will be the discharge sound, and we can consider that the uh, estimated room sound pressure level in the space will be NC23, which is a pretty low noise level. 
So this example, for this example, the VAV selection data and the resulting estimated room noise level can be summarized as shown here. And this is showing the data at the maximum airflow, 100%, uh, 244 or 245 liter per second airflow, and at the minimum airflow, which is 60, and it comes out to be 25% of the uh, of the um, of the maximum. Um, and the sound power levels are shown here for discharge and radiated, and the final estimated sound pressure levels are shown at the bottom, being 31 dBA if you work in dBA for sound pressure, or NC23 or NR25. Now, as I as I as I mentioned, the the sound pressure levels from most manufacturers' catalogs are are estimated um, based on estimated uh, uh, room attenuation values. Um, now, if you have a an application which uh, where the uh, room no noise level is very critical, then I suggest that you 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 do a proper calculation of the uh, of the real uh, estimated room attenuation values using this standard, the AHRI standard AA5. This uh, has the full procedure for, for calculating the room attenuation effect uh, based on the specifics of your of your application in terms of uh, the, the dimensions, the height, the the uh, the ceiling construction and whatever. Um, okay, let's move on uh, to the um, air duct design. Now, um, the air duct design uh, is, is basically comes down to two parts, and that's the, the ducting between the AHU and the VAB terminals. Maybe that's the main ducting. But also the, the ducting between the VAB terminals and the radiof room diffusers is also important. So uh, now, in, although uh, VAB systems are effectively self-balancing because the controls will, will vary the damper to, to try and achieve the air required, it's still important to have a well-designed air ducting system to ensure there is adequate static pressure at each VAB to deliver that amount, the amount of air required. If you don't have the air pressure uh, that you based you, you designed on at the terminal, you are not going to get the airflow out, and therefore you will have a problem. Um, uh, also, uh, the importance of the ducting is to ensure that the discharge pressure at the AHU is minimized to save save uh, energy. So let's talk firstly about the ducting between the AHU and the VAV terminals. Uh, now, uh, there are several techniques to be considered relative to the air ducting design. Firstly, for the, for the main air ducting between the AHU and the air terminals, the most important consideration is to ensure there is adequate static pressure at each VAV terminal to allow the terminal to supply the required airflow that we calculated and calibrated into its control. Um, and of course, the most challenging part of doing that is to ensure there is adequate static pressure for the terminals furthest away from the air handling unit, right at the end of that long, long, uh, long ducting. Uh, there are, as you know, various methods for designing air ducting, uh, but with the need to ensure adequate static pressure, each VAB terminal. It's very common to use the static regain method of ducting design for uh, VAV systems. Uh, this method is based on reducing the velocity of the air after each duct takeoff as you uh, as you go through the, the ducting by changing the duct size. And this allows part of the velocity pressure in the duct to convert to static pressure. So in this way, there is less reduction in the static pressure as you proceed down the air duct. Um, also, and, and as a result of that, the required static pressure at the air handling unit is effectively minimized, which uh, again reduces that fan energy 
that we're so concerned about. Now, looking at the ducting between the, the air handling unit and the VAV terminals, uh, this, is, uh, this is also important. Um, sorry. <laughs> I lost my training there. Uh, yeah. So the uh, other other techniques relate to the uh, arrangement of the routing of the, the duct work, and uh, using the ring main or uh, crossover duct arrangements uh, provide more than one route to any terminal. So this um, reduces the ducting pressure drop uh, through the system, and also it can allow for lower height ducting. So if you have Two, two ways to get to the unit, you can reduce the size of the ducting in, in each one. Uh, this arrangement also gives more benefit from the uh, diversity of the air demand. So as I said, the air can go two ways. This can, re this can uh, uh, re reduce the overall static pressure required at the AHU discharge. Now let's talk uh, yeah, about the uh, the uh, ducting between the VAV terminals and the diffusers. Um, now, it's very common to use uh, flexible air ducting um, in this location, but flexible ducting has a high pressure drop, so it's important to limit the length of the flexible ducting, preferably to a, a maximum of two meter length, and to, and to use metal ducting wherever possible, as shown in the picture here. Um, also, it's important to avoid sharp bends and kinks in the flexible ducting, which uh, create uh, create large pressure drops. Um, it's uh, sometimes on site. It's uh, the installer thinks, well, it's easier for me just to leave that piece of flex and ducting in in the in the ceiling than it is to cut it to the right length and uh, avoid any kinks in the ducting. But by leaving a more more flexible ducting than needed in the ceiling, it can also create some very sharp uh, bends in the ducting and some big pressure drops. Uh, by reducing the, the the pressure drop downstream, you minimize problems with uh, with uh, with noise and uh, unnecessary noise, and also the unair, unequal air distribution to the diffusers, because if one takeoff has a much longer um, uh, duct than another and also has a lot of uh, bends in it, then you're going to get more pressure drop and less air through that diffuser. Now let's talk about static pressure control. Um, as the VAV terminals close, uh, as they close to reduce the air volume to the rooms, uh, there is an increase in the supply air pressure in the air ducting, the upstream uh, upstream ducting. Um, and uh, the fan pressure control is used to prevent unnecessary static pressure buildup uh, in the ducting by reducing the AHU fan speed and thereby also saving the fan energy. If you if you don't can try to control that pressure and the pressure is, is increased, then all you're doing is you're losing the opportunity opportunity for the energy saving because the fan is having to work harder to push against the pressure that really doesn't need to be there. So what we do is um, uh, we we vary the fan speed to to control the pressure in the supply ducting. Or to limit the pressure in the in the supply ducting uh, by uh, having a, a static pressure sensor in the duct, and it's typically it's uh, typically that's installed about two thirds of the way down the main supply air duct. So we set that for a certain operating pressure, to uh, which will be enough to ensure the pressure we need at the terminals. And when we let the air handling unit fan speed be reduced if the pressure is going above that level. Now, a further, a further enhancement of, of this uh, static pressure control um, is to uh, use fan static pressure reset. Uh, now, this is another technique 
in order to uh, re re not to um, have operate with uh, more pressure than you need in the in the ducting when the in intermediate in intermediate season when the, the uh, dampers, uh, the VAB terminals start to close. And so the fan static pressure reset is an arrangement whereby the static pressure setting of that pressure control sensor is reset. That means it's reduced uh, according to a schedule determined by the, the number of VAB terminals that are operating at their minimum airflow settings. So if you determine that um, uh, many of the the VAV terminals are now operating at minimum airflow. You can you can uh, you, you you know that you're um, you don't need to have such a high pressure in that supply duct, and then you can reset that that static pressure control to a lower pressure. Again, this is a technique to to save uh, fan energy, save the operating cost on uh, with the VAV systems. So uh, up to now, my, I, I've been talking about uh, the most common and popular form of VAB systems being single duct uh, system. Uh, now I'd like to introduce some of the other types of uh, VAB system, and firstly starting with the fan-assisted systems. Um, uh, these, uh, uh, these are similar to single duct VAB. Uh, they have um, a supply air damper varying the primary airflow to each room to control uh, together with the pressure independent control. So you get good temperature control. Um, they have the variable fan speed control for the air handling unit. So you get the air handling unit energy savings. Uh, and what's different is that they have series or parallel fans which are used to supplement the primary air with recycled air from the ceiling void. Um, now, this can be used to improve the air distribution in the space, um, and it can be used to reclaim the ceiling void heat for partial heating. Now, there are, the two types, uh, there are two types of uh, fan assisted. The series type, um, where the, the fan is running in series with the, the primary airflow, this, this series, uh, this type, the, the fan actually runs continuously to supplement the airflow to the room. So this improves the air distribution at low loads because even though you're closing down the amount of primary air you're supplying, this recirculated air uh, uh, is introduced through the fan, keeps the supply air fairly constant, uh, which gives improves the air distribution at part load. Now, this, uh, this type of terminal, the series type, is also called a constant volume fan assisted uh, VAV because basically it operates a constant volume. The uh, second type of uh, uh, fan assisted is uh, the parallel type. Now the parallel type, uh, the fans run intermittently according to the need for heating. Um, so actually the main purpose on the parallel type is to uh, is to control the is to control the heating airflow and particularly reclaiming the the heat from the ceiling void from the lights etc. This type of unit is called a uh, is often called a variable volume fan assisted VAV because in this case the air the air volume is varying. Um, now. Of course, fans increase noise and the energy used. So this type of uh, fan-assisted terminals uh, uh, are not as uh, quiet or energy efficient as, uh, as the single duct or, or other types. They are, they're mainly considered for uh, perimeter heating or, or where you have applications where you really want to keep constant airflow. But um, fans uh, fans increase noise and energy use, so so uh, that's not usually um, uh, a reason for using them, you know, it's, or maybe a reason for not using them. Now let's come to uh, now we come to another type of um, 
VAB system. It's called the induction VAB system. Uh, it's uh, similar to the single duct insofar as the supply air damper varies the primary airflow to the room to control the room temperature. And it has pressure independent control. So again, good temperature control. The air hand unit also has variable fan speed control. So you get the full AHU energy savings. Now, what makes the induction VAV different is the primary air is supplemented by induced ceiling void air. Uh, so we add to the primary air um, uh, ceiling void air that is drawn into the unit by air by induction. Now, this results in excellent air distribution because we we're not we we don't get that big reduction in airflow as we reduce the capacity of the unit. And we certainly not get any air dropping from diffusers at low loads, which is a, which can be an issue on the VAV systems when operating at low loads. Another benefit of the induction VAV system is they can be used with very low temperature primary air, because um, the primary air is being mixed with the ceiling void air before entering the room. So although the primary air is at a low temperature, um, maybe nine degrees, it's when it's mixed with the ceiling void air, it may be 14 degrees or so when it enters the room, which is no different to, to any other system. Now, also with using the um, low temperature primary air, this means the amount of primary air can be reduced uh, with the same cooling effect, uh, because uh, it comes back to the formula that we discussed at the beginning. The amount of cooling is dependent on the amount of airflow and the delta T, the difference between the room temperature, supply air temperature. So if we have low supply air temperature, we increase the, the delta T, and therefore, for the same amount of cooling, we can reduce the amount of airflow. Uh, this means that the uh, the air handling unit, the ducting size, and even the VAV terminals, the size of those can be reduced and that you get cost reduction for that. Um, now, this capability is uh, also uh, the reason why uh, induction VAV systems are often used with high storage systems, because high storage systems typically are operating with low uh, low uh, supply air temperatures from the air hand unit. Uh, the, uh, similar to the uh, fan assisted type, the induction type, the uh, induced air from the ceiling void can also be used to reclaim the heat in the, in the ceiling void and, and provide partial heating, heating to, the, to, the, uh, to the system. Um, overall, the noise is low because there's no fans. Uh, so in summary, uh, the primary air is being supplemented by induced room air, resulting in, in excellent air distribution and the opportunity to use low temperature primary air, uh, savings, sp saving space and saving cost. And also there's the opportunity for using ceiling void heat reclaim uh, for um, or heating or or uh, the benefit of having low noise because there's no fans involved. Now this uh, slide shows the arrangement of the induction VAV terminals. Uh, the cold primary air from the air hand unit enters through the circular inlet connection, passes the flow sensor and the auxiliary heating coil if there is one. Um, it then passes the induction damper which automatically controls the amount of primary airflow according to the demands of the room temperature controller and the unit uh, uh, actuator controller, the same as on a single duct uh, VAV terminal. Now, the, 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 the induction damper in this case is arranged in such a way as to create a low pressure area below the damper plate. Uh, and this, this, uh, in, this in, uh, induces the air from the ceiling void into the terminal to mix with the primary air before being discharged to the room uh, supply ducts and the, and the diffusers. So it's the, the magic in this unit, in fact, is the induction damper, which creates an air jet 
And that air jet creates the induction of the ceiling void air to mix with the primary air. So you can see that here in this slide, the, the primary air is uh, passing through the induction damper. Uh, that creates a somewhat of an air jet, and that air jet creates the negative pressure uh, to induce the room air for mixing with the supplier. So this is showing uh, the operation of the uh, induction uh, VAV with 100% primary airflow, uh, and uh, is showing the uh, uh, mixing of the induction air, uh, and then both the primary air and the induction air being supplied to the room, and getting achieving the full flushing of the of the of the room. Of the, so good air distribution, full circulation, no no. Uh, no uh, stagnant air points. Now, this is showing the same, but with 25% primary air. So the air now is, is reduced to 25% uh, of the uh, primary air due to presumably um, less cooling required in the space. Uh, this shows that the, although the primary air is reduced from 100% to 25%, the total air supply to the room has reduced by much less. Uh, and the room is still well well flushed, and there is no air dropping from the air diffuser, even at 25% uh, of the uh, uh, primary air volume. Now, on other VAV systems, 25% can be a challenge uh, for getting good air distribution and, and to avoid any air dropping from the diffuser. So the benefits of uh, induction VAV, excellent air distribution at part load with 25% primary air, the total room air is still close to 50% prior to providing good room uh, air flushing and without falling air falling from diffusers. Uh, the units can operate with, uh, the system can operate with lower primary air temperatures down to nine degrees C uh, due to the mixing of the, uh, of the ceiling void air with the cold primary air before it, the air is discharged to the room. Um, so you can design the system with reduced primary air flows. That, that means uh, uh, smaller ducting, air hand units, and uh, even terminals. Um, it, and uh, as we said before, suitable for use with ice storage systems. Um, you get increased energy savings due to the induction air uh, heat recovery, and that delays, even if you if you if you if you if you use auxiliary heating or you don't, it's it's a benefit in so far as if you do use auxiliary heating, you can delay the onset of the auxiliary heating by having that by recovering that heat from the ceiling void, and that saves energy. And no fans, so uh, low noise. So uh, induction VAV systems provide um, the next level in VAV system performance and uh, very much an opportunity. Now let's uh, uh, move on and uh, talk about uh, other airflow control applications. Um, and uh, what, I, what I presented so far, you know, is basically for comfort air conditioning, but VAV terminals are often used with uh, other systems and, and in applications, particularly for industrial, pharmaceutical, medical, et cetera. And the most common uses are for firstly, um, total uh, building airflow control, where you use to use the this control to balance the overall airflows throughout the building. For room positive and pressure uh, control and for demand control ventilation. So let's talk about the total air airflow control, uh, total building airflow control. Um, and as you can see uh, from the diagram here, the, the principles of VAV systems can equally be applied to the overall airflow control of a building. Uh, controlling and balancing the supply and return air by floor, 
and also controlling the fresh and the exhaust air in and out of the building. Uh, this can avoid um, overpressure build up, which can cause a lack of ventilation and difficulty uh, to open and close doors even. So, um, uh, and if you can get high air flows in corridors and all of these create, uh, or can also create unnecessary noise. So it's important in a, in a large building to, to, to have a means to control the overall supply, the overall return floor by floor, and also uh, to uh, control the, uh, the supply of the fresh air and exhaust air to, uh, to avoid these type of problems. Now, um, the, the next uh, use of, uh, of uh, um, airflow control is the room pressure control. Uh, and uh, so for, and particularly for laboratories and with fume cupboards, uh, for laboratories, the airflow and the pressure control is essential to ensure that the, any airborne toxic materials are exhausted from the space and, and uh, through the fume cupboards. Uh, so um, it's, you, you need a system that can control both the supply and exhaust from the space to ensure you maintain uh, uh, a negative pressure in this case, uh, a negative pressure in the room that will prevent any toxic, toxic air leaking from the laboratory. And it will also uh, um, uh, make, you need to make sure that the, the, the air uh, is, is uh, exhausted through uh, any uh, fume covers that are used. And that needs to be controlled to give you the the air velocity you need across the the window in the fume cupboard. Then other positive and negative pressure control applications. Um, uh, positive pressure, uh, positive room pressure is used to prevent contaminant, contaminants entering. A, a, a room, so manufacturing clean rooms need a positive pressure. Hospital surgical areas um, where you don't want any infections to come into the space also need a positive pressure. Um, and other applications need negative pressure to prevent can the contaminants leaking out of the space. So hospital infectious disease areas, you don't want the infection to leak out. You want it to stay inside, so use a negative pressure. And similarly for laboratories, I just mentioned before, we use negative pressure in those. So, so the, the principles of VAV can be used to to for these um, uh, to control the positive and negative pressure in these type of applications. Uh, another application, common application, is. Uh, uh, VAV terminals are often used for demand control ventilation to control the air quality and uh, particularly CO2 levels in the space. Um, so just as the VAV control can be used to control room temperatures, it can also be used to vary the amount of fresh air, uh, the amount of ventilation air supplied to the space and thereby to control the room CO2 level. So as shown in the schematic here, uh, a demand control ventilation terminal controls the fresh air to be mixed with the return air to control the CO2 level. Uh, showing here the CO2 sensor being located in the room, but it also can be in, in the return ducting. So this is um, uh, a simple application of demand control ventilation. Now, measuring air measuring and control stations are the main component for most airflow control systems, uh, be it for uh, pressure control or for balancing or, or whatever. And, and they are, shall we say, the, the uh, higher quality of the uh, VAV terminals. Um, they include high accuracy airflow measurement, uh, normally with a honeycomb 
a section to get straight in the air ahead of the ahead of the uh, uh, flow sensors, and uh, they use signal averaging and amplification. Uh, the dampers, uh, airfoil blades to give good air control and also low pressure drop. The mainly, mostly, uh, mainly the air measurement and control stations use a low low air leakage uh, casing and dampers, um, particularly if it's for you know an, 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 an industrial or chemical or where um, or a health application where you, you there's a risk of of uh, contamination leakage. Uh, they uh, have uh, high accuracy pressure and Flow transducers, and often, you know, in the case of where corrosive ma corrosive materials are involved in the uh, you know, airborne corrosive materials, they will use special casing materials and uh, coating uh, finish finishes. Now that brings me to the end of my presentation today. Uh, but just before closing, I'd like to put forward some conclusions. Um, firstly, the VAB systems uh, provide individual room temperature control, and they save energy. They are, they are, uh, they are a very energy efficient system, and that's why they've had a relatively long life in the world. They still uh, uh, are quite popular, uh, or very popular, let's say, due to the the uh, the energy savings and also their ability to provide individual room control. Um, now, pressure independent control is uh, is um, essential in my view for accurate temperature control. I haven't uh, today presented any anything about pressure dependent control because I think it's really something for the history books. Uh, uh, pressure dependent control. Uh, cannot assure the accuracy needed in today's world or for temperature control. Um, the accuracy of the flow sensor very much de uh, determines the accuracy of any VAV or airflow control system. So this is a very much an important uh, component of the whole system. Uh, VAV systems, uh, need to be designed using good HVAC system design techniques. Um, it is very, it's not a good idea to rely on the VAV controls alone to, uh, to uh, um, provide, to overcome all the deficiencies in a, in a, in a, a poorly designed uh, system. Um, uh, Controls alone cannot create a good VAV system. So please pay attention to the to the basic design principles uh, for for the VAV system. Uh, factory calibration of the VAV terminals and their controls is is very important. It's essential for good performance. Um, and uh, induction VAV systems uh, provide the next level in VAV comfort. And also in system performance, and are, are, are worthy of consideration. And uh, finally, the air measuring and control stations, which are the main component that ensure accurate airflow control for total buildings, laboratory, hospitals, pharmaceutical, and industrial process applications. So, um, if you are doing uh, that type of work, that type of um, business, I think it's important. The the the, the normal VAV um, principles apply, but the, you need to have a high quality products uh, and and uh, features in order to give uh, a good solution in uh, those type of applications. So. Um, So that's it, uh, uh, and now we move to the Q&A. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Allen. Uh, I have my question box full. Uh, what I will do is I will try to club the questions 
and uh, try to see that we can try to answer as many of them as possible uh, because now it's already 12:25 so we take okay. questions for the say next 10 minutes uh, i'll be quick okay. uh, There is one question which asks, uh, should exhaust air change requirement be more than infiltration considered to design a VAV system for a negative pressure room? Uh, can you repeat for me? Should exhaust air change requirement yeah. be more than infiltration considered to design a VAV system for a negative pressure room? Yeah, well, exhaust, um, I, I don't know if I fully understand the, the, the direction of the question, but certainly in, in a, um, uh, a negative pressure application, a laboratory or whatever it is, the exhaust air change requirement is one of the driving forces of the, of the, of the design because um, uh the this is the the gives the the level of surety that you need to to avoid contamination so um uh at the same time the uh when you say i guess when we say infiltration i don't know if that's talking about the amount of air coming into the into the uh, uh space or, or you mean infiltration in terms of the leakage but um uh certainly in all in order to uh, control a negative pressure you must uh, you need to exhaust more from the uh, from the space than you you put into the space um, anyway uh, if if that person would like to uh, like to explain their question a little more maybe I can give them uh, uh, a better answer maybe in you know in a if they send you a, the information I can uh, give you a better answer at a later time definitely we will uh, and whatever the questions we have we will mark a copy to you and we okay. will try to see that we answer them in a better way if the, right now we are unable to answer them properly there is one more question uh, yeah, i need to understand the, me, i need to understand in that question you know what what they exactly mean by infiltration that's the main point i'm missing anyway yeah go ahead yeah. considering the current pandemic situation now uh, buildings are required to increase their ventilation for yes. VAV system during minimum cooling mode and VAV dampers close to minimum position. The amount of fresh air supplying to the room decreases as well and become insufficient even though occupancy is the same. Is there yeah. any way to prevent this? Uh... No, I don't know of a way to prevent it because you know uh, the, the the whole the whole idea is to increase the amount of fresh air you need to put into the building to to dilute uh, any contamination in 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 the air, right? So um, I don't know a way to avoid increasing the amount of fresh air, and this is a this is quite a sensible um, uh, approach, but. Um, of course, if you get a situation where the amount of fresh air is more than the minimum setting of the VAV terminals, then basically the only way to uh, to address that is to is to uh, is to reset the minimum um, setting of the uh, minimum calibration of the VAV terminals. We'll take one more question. Does in fan assisted induction VAV filters are required in case of return from plenum? Sorry, can you repeat? Does in fan assisted induction VAVs filters that... are required in case of return from plenum? Um... Uh, no, normally there's no filtration of the uh, of the uh, of the air taken from the plenum, um, and um, the reason for that is um, 
you know the in in all of the on all VAB systems the the filtration is is done at the air handling unit right the, you 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 filter the primary air and that's how you ensure your indoor air quality um, the the any recirculated air in the in the in the space you you don't you don't filter you don't need to filter it now only in in um, uh, fan core systems in fan core systems uh, they are they use um, filters filter the uh, recirculated air and the reason why they do that I don't know if it's not not commonly known but the reason they do that is not to improve the air quality in the room what they want to do is to remove any any like uh, lint or any dust in the in the in the air, so that that air, that dust or lint will not stick to the to the um, the cooling coil, because in a fan core unit you have a wet cooling coil, so if you allow um, air to pass over it, which has got um, lint or, or you know, fibers, uh, any sort of cotton fibers or whatever in it those will stick to the wet wet coil in uh, when you have a, a recirculated air you're using recirculated air without cool without wet cooling coils you really don't need need, need uh, filters in the space uh, they're, they're normally uh, the filters used are, are not m much more than rock catchers so they don't really improve the quality of the air and uh, they, they, they don't do anything for the uh, the air quality so um answer is uh uh no you don't need to use filters for the air that you take from the ceiling void uh, mix with the primary air be it a fan assisted vav or be it an induction vav um mr allen there are many questions what i would do is i will mark all these questions to you and then, okay. uh, like last time, we will send them individual reply, or we will make this reply and send it to all the participants for their okay. information. Can I request, yes. Uh, Mr. Yes, sir. Can I request uh, Shalendra? Uh, yeah, thanks, Manojji, and thanks, Mr. Jones, for excellent webinar. Now, I would like to welcome Mr. Sandeep Galotra, President Asher Deccan Chapter, and also congratulate him for taking charge of ARVC CTTC from July 1st, 2020. I request him to propose the vote of thanks. I am unmuting you, sir. Yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Sandeep Galotra ji, over to you. Mr. Sandeep, are you there? Yeah, Mr. Sandeep. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Shalendra, can you just check whether you have unmuted him? Uh, Mr. Uh, Sandeep ji, can you also check whether you have unmuted? Yeah, it's okay from my side. I have unmuted him. Uh, green symbol is coming. He has also unmuted himself, but I don't know why his voice is not coming. Okay, I think um, uh, we have some difficulty uh, connecting to Mr. Sandeep. Uh, Shalendra, can you propose the vote of thanks from your side? And if you have any announcement to make? Uh, 
yeah thanks mr jones for delivering the excellent webinar you you have uh, explained the uh, variable airflow design system deeply and your uh, uh, your presentation i was uh, deep insightful so thanks mr uh, alan jones for delivering the uh, beautiful presentation of design of vav system i would also like to thanks to mr manoj khati uh, and the president of uh, ashrit degan chapter mr sandeep galotra and mr rishab kaslewal president of uh, ashrit rajasthan chapter uh, i would also like thank to all the participants uh, today more than uh, 650 participants have joined and benefited so uh, thank you once again all the speakers and the participants so before ending up uh, i would like to make one announcement that recorded version of this webinar will be available at youtube channel of ashri rajasthan chapter by the evening uh, so 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 thank you all the participants mr, mr. jones uh, and mr manoj sir thank you mr jones thank you shalendra thank you all participants